Uh, and I'm delighted to be joined by the Europe Minister, James Cleverley. I actually want to sort of start where uh, the former NATO Secretary General finished, which he says we simply can't exclude the possibility we may have to get directly involved in a military sense, troops in Ukraine. Well, I think it's very important to remember that Ukraine is not a, uh, uh, a member of NATO. Uh, we do have a, a responsibility, a shared duty of self-defence with our NATO allies, and we are uh, sending troops to uh, reinforce our eastern NATO allies. We're also, we have been, through uh, military training and military equipment donations, uh, we've been helping the Ukrainians prepare defences for themselves and we will continue to support them economically. Foreign Secretary announced a uh, £500 million economic support mm -hmm. package through um, uh, equipment support. We will continue supporting them. Sure. Uh, but the, I mean, the sad truth is that you know, Vladimir, Vladimir Putin has said publicly that his desire is to bring back former... USSR states back into well, he his says empire. that he says he, more than that. He says Ukraine isn't a real con country, and it's it's you know he, he sees it as part of part of Russia. And but what Rasmussen has just said is that if sanctions don't work, if arming the Ukrainians don't work, and you know Putin essentially sh shows that might is right, the world will pay a huge price, and we can't allow that. And therefore, well, he can't, you can't rule out the possibility that we may have to send our troops in. Well, the, the Prime Minister, I think, was absolutely spot on when he said Putin must fail and he must... But does that involve keeping open the possibility of sending in troops? Well, I, I, the, the point is that uh, we are reinforcing our NATO Eastern allies. We are supporting the Ukrainians in their self-defence, and we're also bringing in a range of uh, uh, sanctions to deter that aggression. I don't want to get drawn into speculating what might play out, but as I say, there is a clear distinction between NATO member no, states... No, sure, there is, but, 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 but there is also, you know, a tradition in the West of, you know, essentially standing up for the values we believe in. I mean, Jeremy, I mean, I understand why James Cleverly can't now <laughs> say uh, we may send in troops, but realistically, surely Anders Rasmussen is is right. It may come to that. I didn't interpret his words as saying that the West is going to send troops into Ukraine. The question is, can we find a way to make sure this mm. expedition by Putin is a failure? Mm. And there are lots of things we can do. Mm. Um, but what else on... did those words... I'm sorry, President, but what else do you think he meant at the end when, when I said direct military action by the West inside Ukraine? And he said yes. Well, he, what was, else talking that about, mean? he was talking about supplying arms and no, weapons no, he then moved to on from, the, the but, no, no, Jeremy, he moved on from that. He genuinely moved on from that. There well, was no ambiguity. I think he was being very clear when he compared it to the 1930s and he said, yeah. we must be absolutely certain we make no concessions to dictators who invade other people's territories. But I think that there are lots of ways you can do that without sending your own troops into well, we a hope country like are. Ukraine. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm certainly not somebody who says we should sort of rush gung-ho into doing any of that, but the reality is... The situation is incredibly dangerous, as we know, and Putin is somebody who, you know, apparently is not amenable to reason. Now, look, I want to talk about a lot more to do with this uh, in just a moment or two. Unfortunately, we have to go to the uh, break, but don't go away, because, um, as you'll have noticed, there's tons more to discuss. Look, Bill Browder, you know, most people think he knows more about Putin, certainly more about uh, the individuals who finance Putin than pretty much anybody on the planet, and he says that what we've done in terms of sanctions, is nowhere near enough. Well, the things that we put in place, the things the Prime Minister announced uh, this week, are just the start. And the Prime Minister has said, the Foreign Secretary has said, I've said, and others, but why... that, this is a, that this is the initial tranche, okay. and there are other sanctions that are going to be coming on stream in response to what has already happened. And if there is an escalation, we will further escalate the sanctions. But, and but... the important thing is we're, we're doing this in alignment with our allies, with our European allies, France, Germany, uh, the United States, other members of the G7, including Japan. Unprecedented that Japan has also put forward okay. a sanctions package but, there. But, you know, the EU is targeting Putin's inner circle. The US has taken some pretty dramatic action in terms of the ability of the Russian state to raise money now. Almost every analyst says our sanctions, the ones announced this week, are weaker than theirs. No... Oh, I don't so, so we're not... No, no, no. Well, how can you disagree? I mean, every well, I analyst... I just did. I just did. I disagree. But and the point you is... You can't disagree on the basis of facts. The, well, you've just highlighted opinions. The no, fa facts. 
No, literally, you said people are saying that's people's opinions. The point I'm making, Robert, the point I'm making is that our sanctions are targeting the people right at the heart of his inner circle. They're not. Banks, they are. They were targeted by America years ago, the same individuals. And we are targeting people at the... We are targeting his judo partner. We are targeting people who... Who, who, we are who targeting... America targeted already? Yeah, already. And we are targeting the banks that fund the armed forces and fund larger institutions. We've also made the point that we are going to sanction the members of the Duma who voted to recognise these breakaway states. And we are going to limit the uh, uh, opportunity for Russian banks to uh, transact business in London. And we also said that if there's further escalation in their aggressive activity, we will further escalate. And we are doing this in alignment with our allies, as was agreed when the G7 met in Liverpool at the, t uh, the end of last year, to make sure our sanctions packages are coordinated and escalatory and in alignment with each other. I mean, do you understand this comes against the background where London has been more welcoming to dodgy Russian money than pretty much any other financial centre on the planet, and therefore people just don't trust that we're doing enough? Well, the London, London Financial Services Centre is the preeminent. There is more money coming through London than almost any other financial service centre because London is the leading financial service centre. But center America's in the controls world. on but this we, kind of money are greater but than we, ours. But we, they are greater. We recognise, we recognise that with that preeminent position comes an enhanced responsibility, and that's why the government is is and has been tightening up the uh, the legislation around this, and, and we'll be doing more uh, of that to make sure that the money comes through London is as far as we're able to clean money. So why so late in the day? In terms of what? Well, this has been coming in for years. Putin has been a danger since at least 2008. And we have been... Well, we've given golden visas to people who are close to, well, to, to, to Putin for years. We are late to the party. But we've already seen that we have a whole host of sanctions already in place... Uh, sanctions that were brought in under, under Jeremy, sanctions that were brought in under a Labour government. We have brought in sanctions against Russians uh, who have, uh, who have uh, acted in a way that we uh, regard as needing punishment. Jeremy, do you think we're doing enough? The whole West is going to have to do a lot more. Let me give you well, one that's example. That's diplomatic of you, but it's Well, Britain no, 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 I'm, I'm being, let me give you an example. Uh, in the last 24 hours, notwithstanding all the sanctions announced by everyone, the West has bought $330 million of gas from Russia. Mm. So if we are going to starve Putin's ability to fund his own military, we are going to have to stop that. And we can't ask the Germans to hold or cancel Nord Stream 2 if we're not going to do equivalent things with London as a financial centre, and I'm sure we will. Mm. Look... You've had a senior role with the Tory party itself. The Tory party has taken millions from individuals linked to the Kremlin. That's an embarrassment. Well, when you say... I mean, if you're making a specific... The wife of the former say, finance minister. Yeah, and a lot of people leave Russia because they are fleeing from the Putin regime. Do we, and know, every, do, and, do we, know, do we know where his hundreds of millions and, came from? Well, hang on, you're asking uh, very different questions. The point is, with regards to donations, and I think it's really important we say this, they are, um, they are all from eligible people, they're all registered with the Electoral Commission, and I, I think we need to be very careful, I think you need to be very careful, and others, by doing this whole kind of, but it's Russia, not all Russians are in the... Are in the, uh, uh, the no, one very famous one got bumped off. Exactly. And the point we're saying, the point we're saying is the implication, I'm not suggesting you've done it, but others have, that somehow all Russians, all Russian money are uh, bad people and bad money, I think is something we need to... But we also care. know that in the collapse of the Soviet Union that an astonishing amount of money was made in a corrupt way yeah. and some of it is linked to Putin. Yeah, and, 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 and you, you can't... Have be, and the problem with the lack of transparency about Russian money in the UK is we don't actually know which is dodgy, yeah. do we? Well, th this is why we have and are bringing forward uh, legislation to why tighten up so how we deal with uh, financial transactions in the City of London to make sure that, as far as we can, we drive dirty money uh, out of the system. The and the, the Prime Minister has said that we are going to do more on that as well. Um, just... Jessica, I saw you mm -hmm. shaking your head. I don't think you are convinced no, that we're doing I, enough I, to keep No, I'm not convinced. And I, I also think trying to sort of straw man it and say that we're somehow attacking all Russians, I'm in no way attacking all Russians. Um, the, the reality is, is that um, 
the Intelligence and Security Council said three years ago that there was a problem with donations and the ability of Russians, it, it was specifically Russians, but also any, as we've seen in other countries, to influence our democracy, and nothing has been done. Only in the last few weeks has Boris Johnson even talked about the piece of legislation. Now, uh, you know, just to, in case viewers aren't aware of this, to pass a bill through Parliament... I mean, you're lucky if you get it done in two years. So in two years' time, there might be some legislation that has been being asked for for five years. The reality is, is we have known about this dirty Russian money. We have known that Companies House is not suitable because it allows Shell Company to hide this money from that person. And, and, and actually, the donations, if, we were, if you were to absolutely allow everything to be completely and utterly uh, transparent, that you would be found wanting... And, it hasn't been acted on anywhere near quickly enough. It should have been done much sooner. Have you got any evidence for that statement you just made? W which what, statement? What there? do you mean? Have I got any evidence? Well, which statement? That, I mean, the legislation is, is, is not, has not been enacted. Well, with which, regards which to donate, the, uh, the, the donations is, to the okay, party are so it's completely transparent. Com completely transparent, so you know exactly where all... The, so, in Companies House, you're, you don't have any concerns, because the minister in... Your security minister said something completely different today in the Commons, where he said, actually, you're right, Companies House allows for companies to hold money and for it not to be clear where it's come from. So you can say with absolute certainty that no money ever linked to anything to do with Putin and the Russian state has ever come to the Conservative Party. You may very well be able to in, in a few years' time when we see this legislation come to reality, but you cannot say that now, and the British public deserve it. Well, that, that you could say the same donations to the Labour Party. A uh, hundred percent. So oh, okay. that's why the Labour Party has been calling for the legislation okay. for the last five years. I don't know if, if you're aware of this, James, but you've been in government for 12 years. Anyway, look, I, I think we quite understand now the point that Jess is making. James, thank you very much for coming. Always a joy to see you.